Hello guys and welcome to the fourth part of my Path of Exile Beginner Guide series. Now, I never really wanted to do a video like this where I would tell you exactly what you need to do in each act, etc. Because I always believe that, you know, your first playthrough should be blind. Will you struggle a lot? Yes, absolutely. Will you hit or oh, walk right into a brick wall? Absolutely. But I feel like it's an amazing experience if you would manage to get through the campaign on your own without any help. But on the other hand, because with a friend of mine recently started playing Path of Exile, um, I really learned that it can be very, very frustrating if you have no idea what to do right you have no idea where to go you don't know what skills to use you don't know how to link them you don't you don't know anything how would you you just started playing the game right so i do feel like that this video and especially all the other videos too in which i will talk about a specific act will help a lot of new players to get through the campaign safely and to not be frustrated and maybe even stop playing Path of Exile because Path of Exile is such an amazing game uh, especially also in the end game and if you don't experience that, that would be very, very sad simply because you felt that, you know, the game wouldn't, isn't for you because you're stuck in the longer tutorial. Because let's be honest, that is what the campaign is. The campaign is basically a longer tutorial for you to get into the end game. Okay. And for the purpose of that, I thought that I would create a new character. Now, in my first video, I suggested to you to play a Summon Raging Spirit Witch. I am not going to do that here, simply because I already have a Summon Raging Spirit Witch at this level 95. And I thought, hey, I would like to try out a new build in a leak start scenario. And so what is a leak start scenario? Well, when your leak, when the leak is, I should say, is over. So then, for example, Sanctum leak is over. Everything that you found, currency, items, whatever it is, will be transferred to standard, right? So if your new leak, let's just say the new leak will be called Hunter, Hunt, Hunt, right? If the new leak would be called Hunt, then at the start of that leak, you would have nothing, right? You have to have no currency, no items in your stash. Everything would be empty and you would, of course, have to start from zero. And that is something that a lot of people enjoy. I personally enjoy it as well. And in the solo cell phone journey that I'm going to start, I'm going to simulate that, basically. So I would look into my build, right? I will not be playing Summon Raging Spirit, but a different build. And I will try to, you know, find out whether my strategy for that leak stat scenario is good. Do I get through the campaign quickly? Uh, will I have a great start into the end game of Path of Exile? Because there are so many different things that you can do. And just to check whether my options are good, I'm doing a fresh leak start scenario test in the solo cell phone section. Now for you, I highly suggest to not play solo cell phone, right? Uncheck this, just play the normal Sanctum League, you're absolutely fine. But for myself, I'm going to play solo cell phone here. You do not have to do that, and I do not suggest you to do that. Now, as I said, I'm not going to play a witch, and that is because I'm going to play a duelist who is then going to use the explosive arrow ability um, in combination with ballista totems, which means that I will place a totem and that totem will shoot the explosive arrow uh, ability. And the explosive ability arrow, uh, basically, well, the explosive arrow ability uh, works in a way that if the arrow hits the enemy, the arrow explodes after a certain time period. And you can scale the damage of the explosion, right? Now, the instant explosion does the damage, but in our case, basically, the explosion will cause an ignite effect, right? The enemy will be burning. And that burning damage over time effect is basically the damage that we are scaling. It is a very, very nice build because it's very safe, right? You can run around, you can just place the totems that, you know, do all the work for you because they shoot, and you can just focus on dodging boss mechanics and so on. I've played that build before and I really, really enjoy playing it and shameless like I am I have of already course uh, thought of a name that I'm going to pick and that name is subscribe please I know it's a bit it's a bit <laughs> it's a bit cringe maybe even but if you watched so far right if you watched my three previous videos and you started watching this one I would absolutely appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my videos and of course my videos aren't perfect right by far so if you have any suggestion what I can do what I can improve on um, please let me know in the comments below I would very much appreciate that and yeah with that I think we can we can get started okay the first thing I do after my character spawns is that I always skip all tutorials as I'm already very familiar with the game but it is of course absolutely fine if you don't after that I always sort my flask in my inventory first following that I'm going to pick up the weapon in this case the rusted sword and then talk to the dying exile to progress further the Hungry Corpse will always drop the same skill gem depending on your class. In the case of the Duelist, it is always Double Strike. 
After picking up the gem and equipping it, we are going to explore the beach. In doing so, we will find a chest that will always drop a support gem that we are going to socket at our weapon, in this case, chance to bleed. At the end of the zone, we will encounter Hillock, the tutorial boss. If you have trouble defeating him, simply circle him anti-clockwise and you should never get hit. Also, do not forget to use your life and mana flasks. Killing Hillock gives you a level and a skill point to spend, and unlocks the entrance to Lionize Watch, where you can then buy and sell items, for example to Nessa. Now, if you are a new player, you will probably have no idea what skill gems and support gems you want to use, and therefore don't know what colors are important when it comes to picking the right item. In my case, I was very lucky, simply because the item that dropped from Hillock already has the socket colors that I'm trying to get, and on top of that is fully linked as well. If you talk to Tarkley, he will offer you a reward for killing Hillock. Uh, in my case, I am picking the Splitting Steel ability. If you weren't as lucky as me, who only had to buy a two-handed sword for better damage, you can check whether Tarkley has an item that has the socket colors that you want, or maybe even check for boots with movement speed 2. After linking a new ability Splitting Steel with the previously found support jump Chance to Bleed, I am continuing my journey. At the end of the coast, after activating the waypoint, we are faced with a choice. We can either decide to go straight into mud flats, what I'm doing here, or you can also decide to do the side area, the tidal island first, where you can get a quicksilver flask as a quest reward in town. A flask that provides a temporary movement speed buff to your character. Now, the reason why I'm not going to the tidal island first is simply that my level, as I didn't kill many monsters in the coast, is too low to equip the flask anyway. And in order to level up and to continue with the main story, I therefore venture into the mud flats area. In that area we need to find three rower nests, each containing a glyph, and it is very very easy to die in the zone, and because the charging rowers can stun you to death very easily. Taking your time here if you don't want to die is a very good idea. In the process of finding the exit to the submerged passage uh, that we need to activate with the three glyphs that we found, you may have noticed that there's a second exit as well. That exit leads to the Fetid Pool, uh, which is a zone that you would need to full clear to then receive two talent respec points in town. You can absolutely do that quest if you feel like doing it, but you get plenty of respec points later on for main quests anyway, so veteran players often skip that quest. After getting the waypoint in the submerged passage, we teleport back to the waypoint in the coast. If you need, you can of course sell your items in town first. We then venture into the tidal island where we find Hailrake, who we kill and loot the item medicine chest from. What we then need to do is to get that item into town and to give it to Nessa, who in return will offer us a quicksilver flask as a reward. And from the skill rewards, I am picking Onslaught. We also talk to Tarkle as he offers us new skills as a reward for which we are going to pick War Banner and Dash. And following that, we go back to Nessa and we buy the skill gem Ancestral Protector. After equipping all the gems, we continue our journey in the Submerged Passage. In the Submerged Passage, we're looking for a side area called the Flooded Depths. Uh, in this zone, we are going to kill the Dweller of the Deep, a huge crab. After we killed him, we go back to town to get our reward. Following that, we go back to the Submerged Passage and search for the exit to the ledge. The zone is pretty linear, so it should be very hard to get lost here. The zone also has a mini boss, but most people skip it as you do not get a quest reward for killing it. After the ledge, the next zone is the climb. This zone, like the ledge, is pretty linear and you should not have any problems getting through it. It does contain two mini bosses, the Iron Point of the Forsaken, a huge green skeleton with a bow, and the Fawn, a goatman. However, you do not have to kill these to progress, so it's up to you whether you want to kill them or not. After the climb, we get to the next and one of the most confusing areas of Act 1 in combination with its second part, the prison. In the lower prison, you find a waypoint right away. Uh, if you want to, you can of course go back and sell your items to a vendor or get another skill gem from Nessa as a reward for you know, getting that far. In the lower prison, you also find a trial called the Lord's Labyrinth, uh, at the end of which you need to click a shrine, what is then going to open a portal to take you back to the entrance. These are very important and you have to do them multiple times throughout the acts. Although the zone can be very confusing, you will eventually make your way to the next level, the upper prison, which is even more confusing. All you have to do here though is to find the exit to the next zone, which is called the Warden's Quarters, in which you will encounter the hardest boss yet. Brutus. 
After successfully beating him, you can advance further or, just like me, log out. Which is, by the way, a good alternative to using a portal scroll early on if you don't have one, um, but then sell your items in town. As a reward from Tarclay, I do pick Precision here, which is an aura that we need to activate. And Maim von Nessa. In the next zone, the Prisoner's Gate, the main path is blocked by Piety, who spawns pikes that block the way. After a bit of searching, you should then be able to find the alternative exit to the ship graveyard. Depending on your layout, you might or might not have easy access to the waypoint. If you see the waypoint right away, definitely activate it first. In this zone, we need to find an entrance to a zone called the Ship Graveyard Cave. Uh, at the end of that cave, you need to click on the corpse of a slave girl who stole the All Flame from Captain Fairgraves, an item. After bringing Fairgraves, the pirate, the item, he tries to kill you and yeah, instead you kill him. You could get a reward from town now, but I suggest you to search the ship graveyard further, especially for the entrance to the Cavern of Wrath. After you enter that cavern, you can teleport back to town to get your reward. Talk to Bastel for your reward for killing Fairgraves and to Nessa to get access to new skills. At this point, we will switch from using the skill Splitting Spiel to the new skill called Spectral Helix. We do not have this skill as a reward, but instead have to buy it manually from her. After doing that, we will continue to explore the Cavern of Wrath until we find the exit to the Cavern of Anger, at the end of which we will find the entrance to Merville's Lair. A zone that is simply a boss room. Kill Mervale and you will be done with Act 1. If that video was helpful for you as a beginner, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Bye.